Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello, 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 and welcome. Now, for those of you on the East Coast, I hope you're enjoying a quiet covert um lockdown with all the snow that we have just been hit with i will say it is pretty but and we needed it but ah, i'm not a big fan for driving in it but it is fun kiddos are home Take them out for a little sled play and have big fun as a family because that is what it is all about. And you don't really need a sled. You can just go the old-fashioned way and use a giant garbage bag to get into and slide around in. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, they go faster than a sled. (laughs) But... We are here to talk about sex. And you may be asking yourself, why be so horny? (gasps) Well, there are many reasons why someone could be so horny. But it could be either medical, it could just be a natural thing in your body. But that is what our topic is today. So, what causes constant arousal and horniness? Uh, If you need to do anything about it, obviously, some people are just naturally turned on and get overly horny at the smell of maybe their partner's cologne, the touch of a hair or something against their skin that light touch when their partner brushes right by them and they're completely you know hornified you can also with the smell of the cologne if you're out in a group you know a group where you're outside and somebody else is wearing it brings and you smell it brings on that horniness and all you want to do is go home to your partner because it reminds you of them you know, there are, all, everybody has sexual interests and turn-ons, but they all, diff, you know, are different for each individual. But, things may not, you know, what gets you going, you know? It may just be, okay, you, you smelt that cologne out when you were out, and it made you think of your partner because you knew he wasn't there and then just going home or seeing that person on the next date and they have on the cologne so you put the cologne with them now and just being with that partner is a total horny turn on you know sex urges are a big thing 
Now, because of the libido and sexual arousal, which are subjective, it's really hard, hard to gauge what a lot is. Now, women, if we feel overly, you know, extremely horny, we're thinking automatically it's something wrong. Why all of a sudden have I felt this? But for a man to be continually horny, it is more acceptable. And, but really, it's basically, it's basically how your body is. It doesn't make a difference what, if you're a man or a woman, you know, some make, it makes some people comfortable, it makes some people uncomfortable. And who's to say? There might be something wrong because there is a disorder for uh, constant, having constant orgasms, which when that's said, some people might be, well, I would love to have that. And then the people who are actually suffering from it are just asking to have it stopped. So you really got to think about it when you do go and ask that. Now, there are some general causes for constant arousal. Um, and it is shared, like I said, between both men who have a penis and a woman who has a vagina. Now, if you have both, well, then you're in double trouble. Uh, a combination of all, you know, some factors may come into play. And it's pretty, these are the pretty frequent ones, which most of you know about. But guess what? I'm going to go through them anyway. Ha ha. Obviously, top on the list is always those little boogers of hormones. They, because they play such a significant role in libido, obviously, they would be number one. Spikes of um, testosterone obviously boost arousal and horniness. And women have a bit of testosterone in them as well. So, I mean, it's always, even if we have these hormones and we're getting that spikes in that, you know, those of us who engage in that sexual behavior have higher testosterone. And it, it really creates that uh, six, cyclical situation, which could cause a boosted sex drive over time. You know, you're just, you're working on them. You get these feelings, you're feeding your urges for sex, and your body's basically like, it's getting satisfied, so it's happy. And you, you know, might think that's wrong, but hey, it increases after a while because now what you are doing is you're satisfying it at a higher level every time. So that when you don't get sex, your hormones are, you know, basically freaking out and screaming at each other. So. Another general cause to why someone is so horny is aphrodisiac foods. Now, we all know and we all talk about foods, certain foods that are a turn-on, and they do increase arousal, like having oysters on the half shell, chocolate, all of these things. And those, you know, those are the ones that everybody goes to basically first. So remember that. Um, and it's just basically fueling that increased arousal. So, alcohol and drugs, not something I am a proponent to. And there are two ways to looking at the drug aspect. If you're taking a medication that your doctor gave you and the adverse reaction to it is that, well, you kind of need that medication to make you feel better. So getting rid of it might be a problem, but talking to your doctor is very important. However, alcohol and drugs and almost 
everybody who goes out and has a good time can tell you a sex story related to alcohol or drugs. The intake of such. Now, a lot of people say, does a glass of red wine make you tingle below the belts? Well, some people it does, some people it doesn't. And it is a substance, you know, alcohol is that substance that can interfere with your sexual function. And some people are more roused. Other people, it just basically does nothing and makes you go to sleep. But it does uh, loosen your inhibitions. And it may, where you're able to go out and do things that you weren't going to say and or do. So it makes that part that much better. And if you like that, well, there you go. But after a while, if you're finding out that you cannot get sexually aroused without taking alcohol, without taking drugs, well, then you've gone over the line and need to seek professional help. So, two ways of looking at it. Hypersexuality. Dun, 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 dun. Now, this is really a topic that is very, very debated. And it's debated against the health care providers. Uh, everyone does have a unique sex drive. So this is probably where this comes from. Uh, but really, if you're feeling uncomfortable with your sexual urges, and they are, you know, you're discovering that, hey, these things are really interfering with your functioning in your daily life. Uh, and even to be productive, the ability to be productive or to form relationships, obviously it is something worth exploring with your doctor or your partner. If you find a partner who's basically on the same page as you, hey, go for it because you're going to be sexually satisfied every time. Now, we are going to go into the female portions that may uh, really affect how your sexual basically why you saw horny women <laughs> these uh, things really affect your reproductive system and really in women only so now it's really like this is really for individuals who are cisgender women and people who are signed women at birth because obviously you can reproduce and have little uh, bambinos. And for the most part, there are times where you get so aroused that you are wondering, well, what the heck is going on? Or you just say, and I only get horny around this time. And we all know what the first is. It's the menstrual cycle. When the woman gets her period, obviously, there are changing hormones. And things are going on in her body that activate her sex drive. So, some people, women, will actually report feeling more easily turned on during the middle of the cycle, which is around the 14 days period. Some will get it beforehand. Some will get it after. It all depends. Either way, ladies, you can still get pregnant while you're on your periods, just in case that thought process has floated by in the air, which most women know that. Now, this reasoning is because... This is when the woman's ovulating. And hence the reason why I said, yes, you can get pregnant, ladies. Um, it makes sense. It does. And that period of ovulation 
is the most fertile and most um, lucky time, obviously, to conceive, get pregnant. This is why your body uh, turns up that sex drive in order to produce that procreation. So if you are out there to have little bambinos, get to work. If you're not ready for little bambinos, well, just realize that if you feel that you are having sex on your period, thinking that you're not going to get pregnant, boy, are you fooled. Uh, and for those of you ha who have, completely understand, and I don't think I have to uh, explain that. So, and really that's the right before your period as well. I mean, granted during your period it is the same because most women or a good amount of women can double double off of you late. So remember that. And before the period is when most people are stating that they are extremely horny. But also having sex on your period is not for everybody. Extra lubrication. But it is very messy. So really up to you. If you like that, go for it. If not, hey, there you go. Um, and on that note, we are going to take our first break in the show. So please go get a drink, get a snack, and I will meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex. It's from the point of view of an older woman. Now, welcome back. Hope you had a nice little short break there. Not a big one, a little one. And I'm glad you're back so that we can continue on. Where we were moving on with the female possible causes of why she's so horny and that sexual, that rise in sexual uh, horniness, as you can say in our lovely vagina area. Last we met was talking about uh, the period and how obviously hormonally charged and not always ne you know negative for being immune from getting pregnant you can get pregnant on your period so go have all the sex you want just realize that so moving right along to our next topic which is in the causes full bladder Believe it or not, and the reason why it is with women is because obviously women have the clitoris, the vagina, and the urethra. Ooh, I'm having one of those days. Urethra. Um, they're really tightly packed into a woman's pelvis. So when the bladder is full, obviously, it's putting pressure on all the sensitive areas of a woman arousal system so it those sensitive areas like the clitoris the vagina urethra all of those are just so they can they're packed that blood is pushing up against them and just setting them off 
obviously if you go have sex while your bladder is full, obviously during sex, so that you don't pee on your mate, it usually blocks it off. It makes it hot out because of that, but it would not be a wise choice to do so because you then get a urinary tract infection and everything along that line. So please do empty your bladder and let them work for it because foreplaying is one of the best things to do. So women, and I've heard this a lot, get so pregnant in the first days and weeks of pregnancy because your body is going through those hormonal changes for the baby and it's almost like a they're a bull seeing red and they see that pot now watch out i mean a lot of women i've spoken to also will state that they were pregnant throughout the pregnancy remember baby's pushing out against every fucking possible in there and it is down in the pelvic area so Again, you have the clitoris, the vagina, the urethra, uh, urethra, you know, and that's not something you could just pee away. So that little bambino is staying there at, for those nine months or however long it feels and need it wants to stay there. Now there are, let's moving on to the male causes that affect you sexually and will turn up your arousal. Obviously, this goes the same for males, uh, cisgender males and people who are assigned male at birth. Um, and their constant arousal could be a form of constant contact. Obviously, men have their genitalia on the outside of their body, so they're outies, while women are innies. And obviously they're in their pants, they're, it's getting rubbed up against constantly, uh, being tugged, touched, all these little things that are just basically turning on the man and remind them of that sex and, and when can they get it and all of that. And it's just constant with them. I mean, yes, when we sit down and we can get an orgasm, how about men? You know, yeah, on the outside, and a little bit of touch. Aside from getting kicked in the scrotum and in the family juice, if you want to call it that, that little subtle touch is going and rubbing or whatever. You can be on the freaking subway or on, you know, just heavily packed in a, a, in a crowded room or something, but that little bit of rubbing and touching even on the outside of your pants can turn you on and you got to you know readjust to, and i know we all say you know get your hands out of your pants you know or you're playing pocket uh pocket pool where you put your hand in your pocket and try and move it around or you're just basically rubbing yourself to get you off and yes it does occur and don't say you haven't Frequent masturbation for men actually increases um, that sexuality and that horniness, constant horny. And the reason for this, uh, obviously, like I said earlier, when it came to women, that if you're constantly adhering to how your body is actually asking for that sex constantly your body and your arousal needs to always be satisfied so it will always be at that level and whenever you masturbate and if you masturbate more frequently you are going to this is going to lead to you being more frequent or experiencing more frequent arousal so remember that if you and it's it's hard to it's bad that I'm going to put this as an analogy, so don't take this for what it's worth. But if someone who has an addiction, their receptors are up here. So when they're trying to uh, 
recover and bring those with back those receptors back down where they're supposed to be it's difficult because they they've been satisfied such at the peak that your body is constantly looking for it same thing with masturbating with men so we look at it that way now he asks you, so how much arousal is too much? And this goes for both. It's not really a bad thing of being honey constantly. Uh, sexual, having a good sexual drive is actually healthy for you, which you all know. But if you think that it's getting in the way of other areas in your life, really need to talk to a doctor if the doctor doesn't feel it's anything medically talk to a sex therapist and they will help you to explore other ways to like basically either satisfy or address your sexual drive now if it you have the arousal and you have that need to engage in sexual activities and it feels mandatory to you like you really don't have that that piece in your head that can just turn that off obviously you need to look at the fact that you may have a compulsive urge to act on them and you may need to talk about all of these underlying urges and also this is uh, some signs of hypersexuality, hypersexual disorder. So remember that. Now, you may just have one person who's constantly turned on, and it's different from somebody else who's constantly turned on. Really talk about it. That's what the doctors is there for, to help you out through and get through that and handle all of these uh, things sexually. Like I said, if they don't feel that it is anything and you don't have hypersexual disorder or that constant orgasm disorder, then really, if it's bothering you that much, please seek therapeutic help because that's what they are there for. Now, you know, let's look at the opposite sec spectrum before we go into the different kinds of horny you can have. And you ask, if what do you do to lower your libido? Uh, if you're trying to really bring down your sex drive, obviously there are some things that you can do uh, yourself before actually going to the doctor and with that where it's not exactly you're, you're doing everything other than basically harm yourself on the street to get sex um re have regular sex and it obviously it's healthy for the relationship it's healthy for you uh, and it has awesome health benefits it helps you to relieve that stress, regulate your hormones, and get you, hopefully bringing you back down. Now, if you have it regularly, it gets you to the point where you are feeling fulfilled. So you don't really have to, um, or you don't have an unquenchable craving for sex. So that's basically where that comes from. Another thing is, which we always talk about, is work out. Work out is a good way to relieve a lot of sexual tension and everything. I mean, you're using physical engagement. You're making your body work. And with exercise, because sex is such a good exercise, obviously, if you're working out on machines or with weights, it's also going to release some of the same chemicals and hormones as sexual you know having sex with a partner so remember that you need to divert your energies and i think this is why guys will always say oh, i need to get to the gym <laughs> now we're beginning to wonder 
Next one, obviously, is masturbate. You knew that was in there. And, you know, masturbating is getting away. If it's, it's like, if it's not getting in the way of anything else, I can do it. Because not only does it help you find out about your body's likes and not want likes, but it quenches also that craving, or at least a portion of that craving, so that when you do have somebody else, because I know everybody gets to that point and says, you know, I'd rather have somebody else do it. You know what I mean? So it gets you to that. It will relieve it for that moment, but at least get you there. Hey, find creative outlets. Do something that is not sex related, like hobbies, going out with friends, making sure you your day is packed full, putting your head into your work, basically, and not figuratively, um, not figuratively, not literally, not really anything then <laughs> when I say that. Um, and those are ways to basically control it. I mean, your libido changes day by day you don't have control over that that's just what your body happens to do as we get older it changes you can either go on the oh my goodness i'm constantly aroused i it's me so horny all the time or you can go the total opposite way and you really don't have any sexual drive or any libido Generally, when that happens, that is when uh, individuals will first go out and say, oh, I have a problem, and they'll go see the doctor. They don't go when it's, you know, overly activated and you're always horny. It's always when you're not horny enough is when somebody will reach out for medical help. But either way, if it's interfering, and it's a problem. And that could be, you know, no libido to overly libidized, my new word. And, you know, really talk to the doctor. Because that's what he or she is there for. So, now, on that note... And before we get in the topic of some ways or some kinds of horny you can be, we are going to take a break in the show. So, replenish that drink, replenish that snack, come back, sit down, get relaxed, and I will meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. 
I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Thank you for tuning back in after the break. And as we continue on with me so horny topic, <laughs> now you may be asking yourself, is there a kind of horny for me? Is it different? Is it all the same? Well, believe it or not, there are different kinds of horny. And right now, we're probably a little um, cabin fevered and getting the itch to, and just having sex because we are isolated in the house uh, in quarantine due to the rise in COVID-19. Although everybody is now getting sick of this pandemic, there are there is hope on the way. I hope to the fact with this uh, vaccine that is out there. Hopefully these trials help out. And that's what they all are, trials. So if you are one of those individuals that are taking it for the team, thank you very much. But now we have gotten to the point where like hobbies, doing hobbies in the house are not helping our horny. We got to think of something new. And what do you do? I mean, you're supposed to be social distancing while you're out, uh, outside or whatever. And being horny just brings out all kinds of other emotions as well. And you're probably saying, holy credola, what is happening to me. I masturbated the other day. I got to do it again today. Or we just had sex at least three times. You know, you're wrong. But it happens. We are isolated. Our bodies are just so relaxed and it's allowing for other areas of us to, uh, especially hormones, to basically run a little rampant. So let's, you know, talk about some kinds of horny. Yeah, they did put names on them. Now the first one, obviously, is melancholy horny. This is the most familiar kind of horny. It is when people are horny, but also scared. Because, you know, we are living in the pandemic. Everything is really out there. Everything is surreal. But it gives you, it's almost, it's explained as an emotional sunburn and very uncomfortable, painful, uh, and it must be taken care of. And if you ever want to, you know, basically get that quote unquote tan to come out from that sunburn, you got to do this. Now, melancholy people who, you know, are melancholy hornies are not carefree enough to break that social distancing guideline that we have in effect. And this is, you know, they they won't do this in order to have sex. So, they will become, you know, like there's nothing. They're, they're at their, their wit's end. And, but they're horny as hell. I mean, you can get, have emotional, satisfying conversations that are pretty okay. Um, I mean, and these are a lot of people who really don't have a partner who are in the house, but you cannot get out due to the pandemic, and you're too afraid to go beyond that and be a little daring, which I know this is a big thing, but there are people out there saying, I'm really tired of it right now, and they're going for the whole kit and caboodle and just having sex, sex, sex. Online dating has blown up, and after all this is done, you know, I hope everybody has a partner and someone that they want to be with. 
but you're still going to have those individuals who do not. So there you go. Now, melancholy, uh, horniness, you know, you want to be looking in your, maybe looking at your exes or somebody you've had sex with before to relieve it. But you got to take that little bit of a risk and not be so scared because that's why you, it, you're in this right now and you're horny and everything else. Now, there is the next type of horny, which is performative horny. Uh, it lives like, it's like a kind of, as they explain, a kind of horny that lives mostly on social media. Uh, and it's really, uh, and they pin the biggest social media platform for this is Twitter. It's also, uh, and a, uh, a la mode to talk about penis but this is become a good amount of the individuals out there in the world that went through this pandemic and social distancing and outlet I mean I haven't seen Twitter blow up so much it's crazy but performative horniness it's really made up mostly of clever tweets about missing sex the outrageous things um, they would do for sex or someone would do for sex and then having um, and regrets really about not having sexed hotter that last time that you actually had physical sex with somebody before the pan the pandemic started, you know, it is really this particular type of horny still has its how would you say it controversies, whereas people could, you know you really don't know what people are doing behind the words they may be just writing them out there on, on social media and not you know not really doing that but doing the opposite so it's a, really a way of looking that as well then we have the frisky horny someone who's looking for some light gratification you know it's really coming from you know their behavior which is really born less from a thirst for sex but a more of a desire to have that tantalizing you know that social in, uh, interaction that touch that whatever uh, having a party and basically maybe even you know sexing someone sending some nudies engaging in some flirty banter because you need a release remember that curious horny <laughs> now we are talking due to isolation for COVID-19 pandemic um, this is where somebody is using this isolation time this quarantine time COVID to basically explore and expand this sexual side. Yet you're trying different things. If you weren't really into porn before, you're now watching porn and getting off on it. If you never had anal sex before, you're going to try it now. I mean, remember, mail is still coming, so you can order all the sex toys you want and get them there providing that they are all in stock because otherwise known as the mid-afternoon horny well, this kind of horny is born from a lot of different things that are out there and it's really a variety of things as to why you are you know having that 3 p.m. horny. Now, there is a commercial there that <laughs> shows how where the whole office goes to sleep at 3 p.m. because they need that energy boost and the one guy is sitting there having that um, 
protein snack is still awake. This is kind of sort of the same thing. If you've had too much caffeine, you're a little stir crazy from it. You're wired and unfortunately extremely exhausted. Uh, your body channels, all of that strange, errant energy into your sex orgasm, into your penis and vagina. And everything associated. Although this has not been scientifically proven, but generally it, they've been finding out that uh, some people just want to randomly have, have that urge and randomly want sex at 3 p.m. They don't know exactly why, but this is what they're saying it is because your body's up here on that high level all day long. Then all of a sudden by three o'clock, it's basically crashing down and that's where it's going. So, then you have dumb ass horny. Too, too funny. Obviously, this is the opposite of where you don't want to break that social distancing. Dumbass horny breaks that social distancing guidelines. And they're, you know, they're risking themselves getting COVID or getting sick over uh, the undying urge to get laid. So, unfortunately, you're putting more people at risk. I mean, we've had so many instances out there in the news so far with individuals who have just gotten to the point where they couldn't take it anymore. Just being in the house, they wanted a party. And they've had parties. And then what comes over the news basically the next day? That either that person knew that they had it and had this party and just, you know, infected a good amount of people who were at the party and just took that risk without caring. So same thing with uh, dumbass, and they call it dumbass for a reason. So, you take it for what it's worth. Moving right along in the miso horny topic. You know, trying not to be horny is kind of hard. Because it's a natural reaction with your body. With your hormones. Everything is basically tantalized to have that orgasm. You can see somebody walking down the street. And... You're like, oh my goodness, what a turn on. It's associated with sex. It's a natural part of our human sexuality. It, it can come up at, you know, the most inopportune times where you can't really do anything and you are really trying to concentrate on whatever you're doing right at that point in time. Uh, having these feelings of that sexual desire have the has the ability to trigger a more distressing internal experience for some people. You know, it's not always a good thing. And some of these things, feelings of guilt and shame. I mean, if I mean, some people have grown up with you know being it these messages pushed into their head pushed into their head which is like sex aside the marriage is wrong only men and women should have sex with each other women who enjoy sex are sluts i mean these things like that and you become conditioned because none of those statements are true they are morally true to you and values and if you value your marriage then obviously you're not going to have sex outside the marriage if you have an open relationship hey more power to you so remember that that's not up to me that's not up to anybody else but you and your partner 
But being exposed to these statements every day when you're a kid, was your parents are trying to mold you in your growing up, actually puts the, you know, puts these in and will turn you away. I mean, first of all, it's totally, 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 totally naturally normal to think about sex. We're human. A lot of things that are said to us are myths. And we've all grown up around them. And, you know, other things, other statements that can be just, you know, distressing to you is if you just, you know, identify as LGBTQ or queer. That was another myth growing up. Uh, you're female, you're unmarried. These are all myths that we're all things that, I mean, they wouldn't be, if they weren't myths, would these, or if they weren't such an issue of the fact that this is how we were brought up to these, then we wouldn't have the controversies that we're having out there. And just allow people to love who they are going to love. So it's we've all had them we've all grown up with it it's what you do with that information that makes you that better person so i'm going to take the last break of the show and when we come back we will finish on our topic of trying to not be so horny so completely up to you at this point in the show if you want to go and get a drink or a snack but if you are in the middle of something and we all know what you're doing behind closed doors continue on and finish off and i will meet you back here for more sex talk with andra are you tired of the same old news are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Now, thank you for tuning back in as we talk about me so horny, why? And trying, you know, on the last segment here of the show we are trying to figure out how to make me not so horny now a lot of people looking at that and saying why would i want to do that well I'm telling you it might be just way too much for you that, for you and having some sort of control over you is helpful because everybody wants to be in control of themselves, horny or not. But we are continuing along. Obviously, the truth about sex is that it is both normal and healthy. Obviously, with practicing or practiced with or by yeah, 
consulting adults. Now, thinking about sex is natural. It's part of who we are as humans, actually as animals in general. I mean, plants do it and you don't even realize it. How they pollinate and then doing all this stuff. You can look at that as sexually related and they don't even talk. They just do it and know when to do it. But if you're at like, it could be when it's really at our times of the day and you're not thinking that these this is normal but it is I mean being in the grocery store and shopping bringing any store the toy store for that matter and you're horny you're attracted to something or someone you want it you know this also helps with regards to you wanting to have sex with somebody obviously really there are those people who have or may not feel sexual desire but that in a way is also true because it might be a control thing for them or not even realize you know this is not a problem there are stereotypes with it around sexual desire and arousal and they are all outdated and stereotypic. There is LGBTQ plus myths. And, you know, it's some of the research out there, believe it or not, within this group are that, and these are what sexual, regarding sexual desires. And these are myths. They're very stereotype, well, stereotypes and myths. And, you know, some things are queer people have very high sex drives. Gay men have very high sex drives, but don't want relationships. Queer uh, people have sex obsessions. You know, these are stereotypes. And they all have been basically debunked through research. Everybody, people in general, doesn't matter what your preference is sexually. They are like every other person when it comes to the varying levels of interest in sex. They just like it differently. That's all there is to it. There are male versus female. Uh, males have a higher sex drive than females which is not true, just kind of fluctuates between the person. However, there is research out there that kind of supports it, but there are some, th you know, these are some things you need to really keep in mind. Like, for instance, some men may think about sex more often, which is quite true, but this generalization doesn't hold for everybody, but we do associate men being more horny than women. Uh, there is very little research to explore, explore that uh, high sexual interest in women and therefore lacks evidence, which is not the same as conclusive proof. Another stereotype. Even men do have higher sex drives than people of other genders. People of other genders can still enjoy sex, want to have sex, and think about sex often. Although I don't see how that one is a stereotype because actually it's probably true. I mean, there are, I mean, research from 2016, you know, also. It suggested that heterosexual women uh, have more sex, or have more of an interest in sex than their male partners. Mm, well, depending on the group of women you got to do that study, well, that might be true. Yeah, you got to really look at all of these. Now, how do we accept sexual feelings? 
they can be they can come at the most inopportune time be distracting be frustrating and usually if you don't adhere to them and do something they can be even worse later on but accepting for what they are which is a normal part of being human and all our human experiences is the way to do it increase your exposure to sex or sexuality shall i say like reading erotic books watching tv shows movies uh especially you know movies that where uh the characters have a similar sexual desires than you're having uh if it's porn it's porn go for it and it it kind of puts you in a place where you're not feeling so uh centered out for how you're feeling kind of tells you well you know there are people other than you out there that are thinking it in the same manner um it's not always easy to find these things but nowadays um yeah they're more out there than anything else i mean porn right now is probably a really safe deal to go sexually in horniness but if you are you know you're quarantined with your loved ones and you're married or you have a partner already that you're living with obviously there is no issue there in other ways talk about your feelings everybody hates to hear that i don't want to talk about my feelings i just want to have sex well it is awkward to talk about sex although nowadays more people are a little outspoken regarding it but if this is something new to you and you are just basically trying to f- get your footing in that sexu- your sexuality well you're going to avoid these conversations about your horniness your sexuality or anything that is related to that with your partner to whom you're having sex with don't ever feel that you you should be forced into talking about it however if you do trust that person your partner a wholeheartedly talking about it really will actually open you up but it might just open the door for other things that the both of you may either want to do which is the same common interests and things like that you know you're still learning about each other as you are it doesn't matter how long you've been in that relationship you're still learning and if that partner is taking the time to talk and wants to talk about that that's saying something you know so you really might want to if it's making it hard for you also a, a little cheat cheat just write the things that you want to talk about down and then kind of sort of go by that because it might be that easier because you've already taken it out of your head and put it on a piece of paper now just talk about it with the partner obviously always on the list of everything sexual is a masturbation um obviously a lot of people have grown up where you are not supposed to uh masturbate but it is some people's brains have to be rewired to understand that it is healthy and healthy for an individual uh obviously there's a little bit of a bit of complication when it comes to masturbating uh when it comes to gender specific terms for genitals you, um and that comes under the guise of transgender or non-binary people and it's mainly due to the feeling that they feel disconnected from their body pa- uh, their body parts that they don't match their gender identity so they're trying to find out where and how it does match doesn't mean they don't have sexual desires or they're not horny they're just trying to figure out 
where, what, why, and how. So, uh, and this is where masturbation can really come into play because then obviously the touching of your own body makes you more comfortable with your body and understanding the things that make it do what it does sexually gives you a better idea and being comfortable with your body is where you want to be. So it's really trying to figure out where you want to be in your sexuality. A few guides out there. I'll probably go through those later. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, now, here are some tips for trying to get that focus back in our sex, our horny, and concentrating on ta uh, tasks and stuff like that. You know, try setting those sexual thoughts aside for later. By it, and you do this mentally, so you're really trying to. Uh, substitute those thoughts for other thoughts or things that you need to do don't sub don't reject them or suppress them because they are there and you want to get back to that just it might not be the opportunity to have those feelings or thoughts so you might want to get it your attention on something and fo refocusing on whatever the task is at hand that you're doing Take a short break, you know, if there's way too much, you know, if you sat there and you're in school and you studied way too long, what happens? You get burnt out. So you need to, and your thoughts go elsewhere. You really, you'll read the same, uh, same sentence in your book over and over again. And I think everybody's has that happen to them. Same thing here with sex. Take a break from it. Go and walk. Go and get something. Get a drink. Get a snack. Do something. But instead of getting in the car and driving to someone, why don't you just, if it's like right down the street, get out and walk it. Put your mind elsewhere. Um, and at the same time, you're taking care of your physical needs. You'll have an emotional, um, a positive emotional impact on your mindset. And it kind of sort of is like a computer where it will, will reset your brain a little. Um, get it out of your system. You know, as simple as, as it is, get it out of your system. Um, put on some music, although this one could be a little bit of a double ended sword because they're all the music out there, the words and the lyrics. Are either sexual contentations or uh, something that actually brings back that memory of when you had sex with this person. So being able to recognize that is very, very important. When you feel shame or guilt and everybody feels that way, reach out to a therapist because they can really help you with uh, learning more about healthy sexuality and behaviors, explore ways to get you in touch with your sexuality, uh, and work through any suppressed desires affecting your romantic relationships. Um, the list is there, and it is there for your choosing. Do choose, but unfortunately, I have come to the end of the show and I as always say please practice safe sex if not for yourself or your partner and uh, vice versa also please if you are going to try anything new sexually please educate communicate and have consent very very big consent 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 and i will repeat that so on that note i would like to say 
Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, which was brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Also, I would like to ask that you do subscribe to the show and leave a very good review. Hit like five stars because it not only helps me, but it does help the GSMC Podcast Network in knowing what to bring to their listeners and what they like. Also, please do sort us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Twitter being the most popular, apparently, for sexual connotations. So again, please sort us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are there. Look us up. Like us. Hit that little thumbs up or that little heart for liking. And please, please do have a good sex night. We have the uh, quarantine to have that. And just enjoy that lovely snow on the East Coast. So, bye-bye till next time. When Andu will be back to have more sex talk with all of you out there. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.